In today's video, I'm going to cover how to collect emails and phone numbers while your Shopify store is closed. Very similar to what you're seeing on the screen right now. Now, this has been a highly requested video. So if you have any questions throughout this step-by-step -step tutorial, make sure that you comment them down below. I try to answer every single comment that I get. And if you get value out of this video, make sure that you like and subscribe. But without further ado, let's get into this tutorial. Okay, so first things first, I do wanna share with you what software that I'm using to create my form on my password page. Now for me personally, I like using OmniSend. It is very, very easy to use and intuitive. Now to be very transparent, you can use whatever email marketing and SMS platform that you like as long as it gives you the ability to embed forms, okay? Now, if you don't know what embedded forms are, or it is, is a small line of code that you can put into your Shopify store that allows the form to be visible. That is it, okay? And I will say most email marketing SMS platforms do have that ability. I just like using OmniSend, okay? Now, if you haven't tried out OmniSend, I do recommend that you try it out. I do have a free trial link in the description down below. So once you download and install OmniSend, what you wanna do from there is just make sure that the app is activated. And you do this by going to your theme, hit customize, and then there's like a app embeds. It's like a three block here. You just wanna make sure that it's activated and you are good to go. Once OmniSend is activated, what you wanna do is go back to OmniSend. You wanna make sure that you open up the app. And then from there, you wanna to go to Forms, okay? And then you wanna select Create Form. And this is where you find Embedded Forms, okay? This is the key. Now, from here, there's about six embedded form options. I recommend just using email and SMS capture. Now, if you only want to capture email or only want to capture phone numbers, you can do that. But I do recommend against it. You want as much information from your customer or potential customer as possible. Sometimes people will look at text messages. Sometimes they won't. Sometimes they'll look at their emails. Sometimes they won't. So you want as many touch points as possible. Now, as you can see here, they give you some generic language, but you can change this to whatever you like, okay? Now, what you want to do is... Uh, make sure that you input your privacy policy. Um, and this is very, very important, especially when it comes to consent for, you know, getting people's phone numbers. You want to make sure that your privacy policy is up to date um, and your terms of service is up to date. Now, I have a full tutorial on what you need to put in your privacy policies and all this other stuff. So if you want to look up that tutorial feel free. You want to make sure that within your privacy policy, you make sure that people know that they're consenting to giving you your phone number, okay? But once you input your privacy policy link, you are good to go. Now, the cool thing that I like about this form is that you can add images. So for example, if you want to select an image here, you can just drop it then all you have to do is select file and boom, an image pops up. Now, I think this is really cool because a lot of times people want to see or a reason to subscribe. So if you have a product that you're really promoting, um, this is a very cool way to let people know like, hey, this is why you're subscribing to my VIP list. And this is the product that you're going to get. I've also seen people, you know, just take screenshots of their product being sold out and using that as an image, right? So you can get as creative as you want to kind of push people to giving you your email, giving you their email and phone number. But I also think this is a really, really cool touch, you know, so people can actually see your product, okay? Now, once you feel comfortable with this language, all you have to do is uh, click enable form and it's gonna give you the code to copy to your website, okay? So once you copy that, 
you want to go back to your Shopify store and add it to your password page. Um, so I'm going to show you how to do that right now. So what you want to do is go to your theme, hit customize. And then up top right here, it's going to show your password page. Okay. Now, this is typically what your password page is going to look like. This doesn't look good, right? Now, depending upon your theme, um, you can either remove all of this or I'm going to show you what it'll look like. So I recommend just completely getting rid of all of this right here. Just delete, 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 and just removing this. And what you want to do is add section and you're going to select custom liquid. And then within that, you're going to uh, paste the code and you're going to hit save. So boom, at this point, you have your new lock screen and password. And this is what your new password page looks like. OK, very simple, very easy to do that's what it looks like on desktop and then on mobile this is what it looks like so very very easy to do now if you want this completely removed like your password header um and your footer there is a way to do that um but you have to have a different theme so for example if we back out if we exit if we go to my Debutify theme, it does allow you to do that, right? So if I go to password, it's completely gone. So your theme is going to determine if you see that password um, login header or not. At this point, you know how to collect emails and phone numbers while your Shopify store is closed. But I hate to break it to you, but if you don't have a tried and true strategy to get people to your Shopify store in the first place, well, you just completely wasted your time. But no worries, I created a video to help you get people to your Shopify store with ease. So check out this video right here.